Oh, it's just to 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 show for to so I don't know how you say that name. I said tissue phone for like the long <laughs> like the longest time, and then I heard somebody say it in game, and it was completely wrong. So I'm just going to call her her. Okay, her rituals did not go as planned. The warp disturbance triggered by the Lady Navigator's trance washed over the Sanctum Navis. The Voidship's machine spirits reacted to the surge of the Immaterium and interrupted it as a call to action. Thus did the emergency jump into the unknown begin. Amid the shrieks of sirens, the clanging of shutters, and the distant hum of the warp engine, some unknown will pulled the Lord Captain into the Sanctum Navis, toward the creatures from the living canvas that had already gripped the Lady Navigator's throat. Horrified, almost out of breath, and struggling to scream, Cassia stretched out her hands, and began, to, and began slowly sinking into her own painting. The Lord Captain... Weapon skill here, 92% chance to succeed. Wonderful. Wow, my toughness is only a 50% chance. Oh. Uh, let's do the weapon skill. The, we the, Lord, the Lord Captain snatched the dagger from the floor and started hacking at the hands, reaching from inside the painting. Succeeded. The ritual dagger of the House Orcelio cleaved the billowing shadows, and yet the painting remained... The, sorry, the painting had reformed itself the moment after the blade passed through it. Cassie went limp in the clutches of her horrific, horrific, horrific creation and was immediately pulled to the other side of the painting. A moment later, Schaefer, still clutching the dagger, was likewise plunged into the depths of the world the Lady Navigator had created. Schaefer awoke, finding herself in the middle of a gigantic, boundless, billowing nothingness. Her body felt weightless, floating in a void strewn from hundreds strewn with hundreds of the Lady Navigator's colours, some of them bright, warm, and alluring, others moro mo morose? morose, cold, and heavy. The Lord Captain... Um... Swam towards the dark colours. I have a feeling that's what we need to do. Greyish-blue waves swallowed the Lord Captain, and the feeling of lightness disappeared as her limbs grew heavy again. Schaefer fell onto the hard floor of the laboratory, cluttered with vats as tall as a human. Inside them were dozens, hundreds, even, of repulsive mutants. Some had no arms or no legs, or two heads, or no face, or their innards turned inside out. But each had white skin, white hair, long clawed limbs, and ruby eyes. My lady, the child, the child is born. She was, like, born in a vat. That doesn't sound very nice, does it? Poor Cassia. The tall woman slowly approached one of the vats. Readings, stable, mutations. None were detected at any of the stages. Genes, identical, my lady. Chances of survival? A hundred times higher than any of the previous experiments. How long will it take to grow this child? I fear accelerating the process might cause the body to fail. The only one after years of silence. I understand the situation. Natural growth. I do not have much time. We will have to go with the backup plan. Yes, Noveta, it will be done. The memory dissipated and a gust of silvery wind hurled the Lord Captain back into the ocean of nothingness. But this time, the nothingness felt dismal. Instead of bright hues, all it contained was shadows of invisible monsters swimming by. Shrouded by a nebulous veil of unfathomableness. I can get that word. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Smaller words? No, apparently not. The Lord Captain um, reached for the bright colors. Schaefer plunged into a river of, br of bright hues, and flashes of rosary sunset and lilac carried her down a the dazzling stream. Before long, the Lord Captain was standing in an idyllic garden, permeated with the fragrance of flowers and the singing of birds. Servants in purple... Li livery? Livery? Darted back and forth, attending to a withered old woman in a navigator's mask. Sitting on her lap, a smiling collie... coily? And smiling coily to everyone was a little girl with ruby eyes and white hair. Be a good little girl, my child, until the day we meet again. With trembling hands, the woman handed the girl to a navigator in laboratory attire. I am out of time. 
prepare the child for the Atlas transfer and destroy all records and mentions of the world of IRTBI. None must learn of what's... Uh, sorry, none must learn of that which took place here. And remember, her body must grow strong for her to accept my power. And once I have returned, loyalty will be rewarded. Oh no, hang on a minute. Uh, is she trying to resurrect herself? Through Cassia? Okay. The memory dissipated in a gust of silvery... Yeah, the same thing. So we go back into the unfathomableness. So the Lord Captain closed her eyes and remained adrift in the weightlessness. Schaefer stayed in the ocean of nothingness, devoid of any sensation or emotion, until an ornate ritual dagger floated before her eyes and reminded her of a world that once seemed more real than this one. Someone's scream broke delicate equilibrium of the Lord Captain's emotionless body, and the weightlessness released her. She plummeted to the maroon abyss of roiling illusions, but was now in full control of her body again. Then Schaefer descended into the abyss towards the screams. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh Here we go. Looks like this picture doesn't look great, huh? The Lord Captain crashed from the immeasurable height to the bottom of a, royal, of, the, of a roiling abyss. And the next moment, Schaefer saw two figures amid the billowing maroon mist. One of the figures, unnaturally gaunt and tall, was clutching the other, smaller one in its claws, screaming furiously. The Lord Captain... Oh, awareness, 60% chance. Ooh, peered into the strange maroon mist. Failed, goddammit. The crimson swirls confused the rogue trader's thoughts and emotions. She could hear whispers and moans coming from the depths. If she were to take a, uh, one step back, she would be lost forever in the violent mist and join the wretched chorus. But there was also a voice so desperately pleading for mercy. Yet whose voice was it? Schaefer could not tell. The Lord Captain drew closer to the figures. One step was all it took for some unknown force to notice Lord Captain, seize her, and drag her through the painting's twisted space. Now the Lord Captain could clearly see the dark shade of the long-dead navigator leaning over Cassia, clutching her neck in its clawed fingers. The shade screamed, You were given life because of me. You survived because of me. And here you are now because I have willed it so. Bow before me. Tell me what I wish to hear, and your suffering will end. Go on, child. I have waited for so long. Submit to me. Cassia looked exhausted, her body covered in hundreds of thin cuts, her lips lacerated, claw marks on her cheeks. Yet there was a steadfast resolve in her eyes. I know who you are, Miss Orcelio. Let's call her that, right? I know what you crave. I saw it in the visions that you sent me again and again. I won't allow you. I will never allow you to become me. Cassia's fatigued voice quivered, but she was not about to yield in this battle. The Lord Captain... I could stab her. Urge the Lydia and Navigator to fight the monster to the bitter end. Persuasion. 84% here from Jai. Uh, let's do that. Succeeded. Great. The Lord Captain's words attracted not just Lady Cassie's attention, but hers. Finally noticing the presence of a living creature in that bizarre world, turned to face the interloper and lunged forward, seething with rage. When the entity's claws were millimeters from the rogue trader's throat, Cassia opened her navigator's eye, and a wave of unbridled warp energy obliterated her spectre before she realized what was happening. The lady navigator graced the Lord Captain with a tired smile. The abortive ritual had turned out to be a trap set for Lady Cassia by the previous no novator of her house, but the rogue trader had ensured that her plan fell to ruin. And now it was time to desert that accursed place. Okay. I only have one choice here, but it was Cassia took the rogue trader's hand and guided her through the maroon mist and out of the painting. Their unconscious bodies were discovered in the Sanctum Navis 20 Terran days after their disappearance. 20 days? As soon as the rogue trader's void ship had emerged from the warp in an unknown system. Cool. Well, let's take a look around, shall we? Oh, oh, wow, I like that. I like that, like, purpley-pink sun in the middle. That's great. Let me make a, let me make a colony here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ow. Oh. 
Nothing. All right. This would be a nice little place to make a colony. Right up over here. I like this little spot here. Yeah. Come on. Colony. Damn it. That doesn't... That doesn't... Palace of the Atlas. Oh. All right, team. Let's roll out. Crone World. Hmm. This looks... Why are we seeing... We're seeing some very Eldari things here. Is it supposed to be Eldari? Intriguing. Intrig... What is this? Decayed pages. Okay. The heart of the navigator's camp. This is where... Tishif... Tishif... Ocelio performed... <laughs> Uh, performed her experiments hundreds of years ago. The world oh. will bow. So this is the place she wanted us to forget, right? She wanted everybody to forget, I'm guessing. But, uh, guess what? We found it. There is, barely, uh, there, there is a barely noticeable imprint of a long, clawed hand on the broken cogitator screen. Let's seize <clears throat> the opportunity. The Eldari Sanctum is blemished by human presence. In their pursuit of ancient secrets, the navigators had no qualms about filling the ruins with machinery and supplies. Embrace ah, so I wonder if it was, um... I wonder if it was an old... Um... Triumphant, as always. I wonder if it was like an old Eldari planet and they took it over. The, Ocel the, the Ocelio navigators left no stone unturned in this Eldari temple. Yeah, okay, it is, yeah. It is as if they were looking for something that they could just not find. Over. Oh, good, nice. Oh, what is this? Drakari equipment. Elite marksman gloves. Fifteen ballistic skill. Hmm. Predictable. Maybe one for um. Uh, Pandora. If I could give her um. Drakari equipment skill. I could give her. Um, I could give Sometimes, her those. I wonder to what extent our perception of the Empyrean differs. Uh huh. I'm glad that I never have to look at it. No offense, Cass, but I'll do just fine without an eyeball in the middle of my forehead. It's okay, Cassia. Idira has a lot of new friends in her head. Okay. Um. And um. Sometimes she says some weird things. Don't worry about it. Someone removed the data crypt from this dead machine to keep the house's secrets safe and leave no information about the experiments that took place here. Law Zeno. Ooh, nice. Succeeded? The ruined statues once depicted pages from the long history of the Eldari. Uh, how do I get down there? Oh, I could just go around. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize I could keep going round. Ah, oh, I see. I see. Got some demolition here. The Emperor favors me today. Jeez. That was louder than I thought it was going to be. So that's a ring weapon. Grenadier's backpack. The wearer and their allies are immune to damage from the wearer's grenades. Fine. The first time the wearer uses a grenade during their turn, they have a 50% chance to not expend the grenade. Oh. Actually, kind of, actually, kind of nice. The world like every time we throw a grenade, you have a fifty percent chance not to actually use the grenade. That's that's actually not bad. It's a shame I don't really use grenades. Hi guys, what are you all doing here? Thought this planet was supposed to be forgotten. Yet yeah, there are some bodyguards here. Halt, cursed child. We had to ally ourselves with the Xenos. Once more to stop you. You did what? No matter, it is a small price to pay for the liberation of House Ocelio from the chains of tyranny. Oh, we. Okay. Be gone, renegades. We followed the Atlas's call in your wake, child. Stand with us. House Ocelio will not trade. Her legacy for the false ideals of blind fools. Are we about to throw down? Uh oh. What? What is happening? 
Uh, uh oh. That was a squelch, wasn't it? Ocelio Renegade's representative, damn Xenos. This was not the bargain we struck. Throne smite you. The navigator whose skin is so thin that it reveals the muscles, bone, and innards underneath underneath clenches his augments, augmented gold jaw in contempt. The great regent's envoy. What is this? The rogue trader and the traitors to the house have lured the child into a trap set by Xenos. I wish my eyes were deceiving me, but now I can see clearly that the great regent Aronto was right to send us after your vessel. Come on, Augurs. You didn't tell me somebody was chasing me? The sturdily built woman is armed with a pistol, and yet there are signs of exhaustion in her posture. Her face is hidden behind a gem-encrusted three-eyed mask, and her elaborate navis nobilite vestments are stained with dried blood and other evidence of recent combat. Ew. Uh, address the Renegade's envoy. How did you get here before us? No one but Cassia knew the way. Rogue traders are not the only ones who know about how uh, know how to find allo uh, alloys, allies. Saying that, we should have rid ourselves of this alliance the moment we crossed the webway gate. You can trust no one, least of all the vile Xenos. Troopmaster. You will stop defiling the remains of the hallowed ground of our ancestors with your... A uh, semblance of speech, monkey. The Harlequin's bright clothes glimmer faintly in the, in the dim light of the system's star, and the sinister grin on the mask only adds to his menacing and aloof presence. The final act will soon unfold, where you will pay for the deeds of your ancestors. Stay put and wait for the puppeteer to pull at your strings. Cassia. Why? Why are there Xeno ruins where the palace of the Atlas should be? Why is this place coated in in an impenetrable black mist. I... I'm suffocating. Three-eyed monkey who sees into she Sheal. The taint of your ancestors has begun to consume your body and soul. Pathetic fools with an insatiable lust for power that is not yours. Ending your misery will be merciful. Taint, do you mean the Atlas, Xeno Xenos traitor? Silence, traitor. The Atlas is the sacred relic of House Orcelio. It is what elevates us above the rest. How dare you? The reagent's envoy abruptly loses her breath with a groan, and she clutches her chest where the atlas is implanted. I refuse to accept this impossible. What taint do you speak of, Xenos? Do you not see it? The Harlequin's voice booms throughout the ruined temple. When you monkey discovered this crone world, you tainted it with your crude technology, despoiled it of its relics. Ruined all there was to the last stone. But worst of all, you sullied the souls of our ancestors. Reposed in their sacred vessels. The spirit monolith. He points a fin a, a fin he points a thin finger at the remarkable crystal floating behind his back, and the harlequins around you tighten the grips on their weapons. Like a sea of bottomless blue. Cassia looks around her with a stunned expression, her gaze shifting from one Xeno to the other. I, I did not know that living things could extrude such saturated hues. I wish I could paint this ocean of a different color. Examine the hovering crystal. Oh. The enormous translucent stone shares a strange resonance with this place. You can sense the energy emanating from it, mysterious, restless, coagulated, it resembles a giant heart that has been plucked out of its owner's chest. Its crystal clarity is pierced by hundreds of dark veins that have taken root within a terrible illness. Ah. How did the navigators of House Orcelio taint the spirit monolith? Oh, I pressed the wrong one. I put, why shouldn't I simply kill you all where you stand? <laughs> no, not the option I wanted. You will have your cue yet, monkey. Have patience. The denouncement is nigh. Oh, that sounds fun. The experiments. Cassia covers her mouth in horror. This is where she conducted her experiments. No, it is not possible. To consort with Xenos is to violate the word of the God Emperor. It is known to all 
that she executed anyone who showed any interest in the enemies of humanity. Is that so? Then why is it that every piece of metal or fabric in this place bears our house's coat of arms? Open your eyes. Quiet. The, Harlequin's tw the Harlequin's tone is mild, but it is not a request. I am unsurprised that the truth is hidden from your gazes, three-eyed monkey, who see into Sheal. Sheal. I realized it the moment I first met you. Wretched. Begging us to help you destroy your own kin. I sensed it within you, our ancestors' call, their pleas, their endless torment. I knew that what you, were, what you found was a crone world, and I humbly waited for the day you would lead me to it. Okay, address the Harlequin. What does this all mean exactly? It means, monkey, that your companion's ancestors sought to command the power of the spirit monolith and yet suffered failure time and time again. Eventually, they discovered a way to harness this power, a terrible way, a torturous and unforgivable way. They shattered the monolith into many shards and weakened the souls within, and then, then they placed the shards inside their bodies to empower their abilities. Oh no. So we, not we, the, the House of Celio literally used the Eldari Spirit Stone, or Spirit Monolith, to increase their power. Uh oh. I never wish to learn such harsh truths about my own house. Cassia buries her face in her hands, and you feel waves of despair spreading from her leaf frame, which suddenly appears as fragile as glass. <laughs> there is no shame in using the Xeno power for the good of the Imperium. Neither Theodora von Valencius nor her was infallible, but that doesn't mean we are powerless to rectify the errors of our ancestors. You say that only because you wish to soothe me. Maybe. The Renegade's representative? You... you are more than just a tyrant's heir. You are a successor to a mad heretic. A betrayer of faith. You must be destroyed, you and the Atlas, once and for all. You think the solution is so easy, don't you, monkey? When you die, your souls become captives inside the spirit monolith. This process is deranging. Our ancestors. Who have served as the monolith's guardians for aeons. It is equally agonizing to the souls of your dead. And the more monkey souls to the, mo the monolith absorbs, the more volatile it becomes. The Eldari and the monkey have spent many a dance battling for supremacy within the monolith, and its integrity is waning. You sense it too. The only way to free our ancestors from the pain is to separate the monkey, uh, separate the monkey taint from the spirit monolith. My troop is here to perform just that. We will pay with. We will all pay. Blah, blah, blah. We will all play our parts today. And when the final act of this age-long tra tragedy begins, the monkey players will exit the world stage. Uh oh. The sinister shadows dance on the Harlequin's mask as he draws an unknown device from his sleeve. There's a lot of options here. We got a lot of options. Um. Um. Cassia is the inheritor of the one who bound the, the spirit monolith to the navigator's bodies. Listen to whatever she has to say. She is not the woman her predecessor was. Cassia gives you a grateful nod and turns to the Harlequin troop. I cannot change the past, it is true. Nor can I change the fact that my house is forever tainted with disgrace born of her hubris. Yet, all of us here today have the power to change the future and halt the unending suffering that is drowning both your kin and mine. You. You suggest the, the monkey and the Aldari change the future together. I must admit, my leading lady, I am confounded by your audacity. Go on. My atlas. Cassia places a hand on her gilded breastplate. If you can free the phantoms of my house from the spirit monolith and guide them to enter my atlas, their experience and wisdom will help steer House Orcelio onto the path of truth and allow future generations to avoid the calamitous pitfalls of their forebearers. K. Morag, my leading lady, the shards of the monolith are lodged inside the chest of every monkey 
bound to you by ties of blood. How exactly do you intend to return them? I shall use the Atlas power. I should use the Atlas to sever my subject's connection to the spirit monolith, and then I shall extract its shards from every navigator of House Orcelio. This artifact is implanted at birth, but that does not mean that the ritual cannot be reversed. I witnessed its, witnessed its creation through her eyes in my visions. I lived it over and over again through the memories of the uh, is it Setala clan. I, I can recreate the ritual that will return the souls of your kin to you and save my people's lives. Um, seldom do he humans and Xenos get the chance to resolve their conflicts without violence. I second Lady Cassia's proposal. The Harlequin remains still as a Norish statue, still as a Norish statue for several minutes. Then a Maleficious Malefic Maleficious? Voice behind the mask says, I am willing to try, monkey. No. This is the uh, the great region's envoy. I won't let you destroy the Atlas. Even if, it, if, even if it is the child's wish, Lady Ocelio, you are too young. Inexperienced, you simply can't comprehend. Uh-oh. You address the future novator of House Ocelio, one who survived the massacre of Urek V. Who has lived following an attempt on her life at the Palace of Dargonus, who has restored her house's stability in what scant times she has been free uh, has been free, while you, all of you, have spent years destroying it from within. You address one who has passed through the tempest of the Sea of Souls to the true Atlas as a rogue trader's ally. Yet, still you call me unworthy, don't you? Young, inexperienced, kneel before me and I shall forgive your insolence. Uh oh, uh, Cassius getting a little little mad. Fellowship succeeded. One hundred and fifty-five percent. House Ocelia was always loyal um, to the Novator. Henceforth, it will be loyal to her successor, even if you see fit to lead us down a different path, my lady. Are you done with your performance, monkey? Then stand aside and do not interrupt. Okay. Now what happens? Ah, I can feel it again, the tranquility. The ancestral souls have found peace, and corruption no longer endangers the monolith or this world. The Harlequin's narrow shoulders now look completely relaxed. Remember our agreement, Cassia Ocelio. We will soon meet in this place again so you can give us the shards. And now, be gone from our world, monkey. Fair enough. Can I... I tread a path unexplored. Can I loot everybody first? Is that okay? You, uh, you mind if I take this? No? Alrighty. I'm still new to the <gasps> art of embrace true power. Ooh. Staff of Ocelio Navigate, uh, Novator. Oh, wow. Look at that thing. 16 to 21 damage. First use in combat of every navigator power costs one less AP. Nice. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Put that there. Powers unseen uncover my path. Oh, well, well spotted, Orcelio. Nice, uh, nice staff for you there. Beautiful. A minor setback. Oh, we got some more loot up here. Sorry, guys. Excuse me. Pardon me. Just gonna. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, let me just. Ooh, let me just grab that little body right there by your feetsies. There it is. Okay. Hey, thanks. Intriguing. Great, great, great to see everybody. <laughs> Have a nice life. Bye. Okay. Successful. I think we did well. Right? Uh, resolved a lot of issues. Didn't get to colonize the planet, so I'm a little upset about that. Um, does she want to talk to us after this? Um, yes, she does. Okay. Cool. What's happening to my ice planet game? I want my ice planet. Where is it? How do I get out of here? Here we go, down here. 
Hmm. Yeah, I want that planet. I, I need it. I still can't get to these two things. Oh, wait, wait. Create new routes. Ah. Uh, oh. But damn. <laughs> no new routes at all. I press new routes and nothing happens. It'd have been nice to go here. I don't know what's here. I kind of want to go here. Maybe I'm not allowed yet. Maybe that's what the reason is. Where is my frost planet? Is it this one? Ice world. Yeah, there it is. Hmm. I wonder if I have to wait till later. You know? Anything? Nothing. Nothing. Damn. Is there anywhere else? I mean, go talk to Cassia, right? And then... I guess we have to go back to Footfall and talk to Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, we've seen that one, that's why I'm going to skip it. We can go and talk to uh, the Inquisitor. The Lord Inquisitor. Which I'm sure he will be super happy to see me. Uh, <laughs> after everything I did to, uh, to, to Chorda. Nothing new. Damn. Yeah, maybe we just gotta wait. And we'll see how it goes. So, Mr. Lord Inquisitor. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. I don't do anything else at this point, right? I think I'm kind of clear. Oh, no, wait, I need to... Yeah, I need to talk to Cassia. Don't forget to do that. And then Mr. Inquisitor wants to see us. Let's see this. Oh, where is it? An, uh, oh, a new ruler. So this is what I want to do. I want to take... Uh, I want to take a new a new colony. Hmm. I wonder how I do that. First of all, let's head down to uh, big jump here. Head down to Footfall. Oh damn! It was discovered that one of the small vats in Engine Hall Five, which should have been filled with waste water, instead contained a liquid that looked like blood. The incident was deemed not to be of serious concern, and everything went back to normal as soon as the ship returned to real space. Yeah, no, no worries whatsoever. Just a little bit of funny coloured liquid in the old uh, waste pipes. I'm sure nothing ever bad came from that. Ah, oh, don't we just love safe routes? Look at it, glorious. All right. Oh. Oh, who is this? Chartist Captain Osterius Thorfast. That's a name for you. A familiar voice cuts through the hissing of the Vox Channel. Greetings. What can I do for you? Uh, wait, huh? I've already spoken to all of these. Oh, wait. Did I? Oh, I. Cl I think I clicked on somebody. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. I think I clicked on these guys. Not what I wanted to do. Alright, here's Footfall. Let's talk to Cassia first. Let's talk to Cassia first. And then we'll uh, we'll hop onto the station. I'm a, I was hoping for a little bit more side content. Um, like in Chapter 2 again. But so far, there's not been a lot for me to do. Maybe after I get past this piece? I don't know. I guess we find out. Especially because I want to try and get more heretic points. Weird. Okay. Where is she? There she is. There she is. Hey, Cassia. Oh, how nice.
nice of you to grace me with your presence. I was just thinking back to our journey to the Palace of the Atlas. That is, to the world of Xenos. <laughs> Remembering that most reckless act has enveloped my mind in a whole palette of hues. But when I think of the great risk you took for House Orcelios and my own sake, an azure shawl instantly descends on my shoulders, and amber sparks flash inside my soul. Please accept my sincerest gratitude. Hey, any time. Any time. Um, so now the entire power of the Atlas is in the Novatus' hands. I suppose so, if by power you mean priceless knowledge. As for the special powers granted by the Xenos souls, the navigators of House Orcelio will once again have to contend with their own bodily and spiritual limitations. However, I am undaunted by the prospect, for our line and our gene have never been weak. House Orcelio will succeed, and soon we will rise again, draped in white and gold. Okay. Uh, what awaits the navigators of your house now? The Xenos have managed to free the souls of our ancestors from their confinement. The memory and wisdom of those that came before us will serve our house, helping build upon the ruins of the present a firm foundation for generations to come. I believe in that, as I believe in the divine light of the Emperor. And so that's the decision we made, which is having discovered the truth about the Stairway Atlas, Cassio allowed the Harlequin troop to separate the souls of the Ocello Orcello, Orcelio, navigators from the Xeno artifact and absorbed the wisdom of her ancestors into her own atlas. So now you are, are the uh, so now you are the full-fledged Novata of House Orcelio. You of all people should know that succession is a lengthy and tiresome process. <sighs> While yeah. my entire house is busy preparing for a grand council at which I am to ceremonially inherit the late Tisiphone's title. Tisiphone. I have decided to remain <laughs> by your side. To relish just a little more of this carefree liberty. For as soon as I am summoned to do my duty, we must say our farewells. Tisiphone. Not Tisiphone. <laughs> Tisiphone, right? That's obvious. Tisiphone? I would never have pronounced it like that from looking at that particular spelling of the word. Oh, whatever. I'd like to discuss other business. Of course. I will try to answer any questions you have. Uh, I'm going. I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. Anytime. Anytime. Alrighty. I give it a good save. All I keep thinking about is getting that sort of faith. But I really feel like I have to respect to get it. It's driving me nuts that I just can't. I, I, I want to try it. I think it'd be quite fun. Alrighty. The atrium? Yes. Let's see what Mr. Inquisitor has to say for himself. I hope the place looks different now that we've um, removed Chorda's uh, rain. Unless Takara has gone kind of mad, in which case we might have to sort him out as well. There is a fervor in my soul. The world will bow. Suffer not the heretic to live. Are you ready to die? Well, I mean, that depends on uh, by who. Infected thug. Really, we're going into combat with a infected thug with 35 HP. I... I mean, I'm just going to start the battle. I'm just going to get Adira here, and I'm just going to blow that guy's head off. Powers unseen uncover my path. <laughs> oh. 
I'll take that. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, you might want to get out of the poison. Okay, there you go. <laughs> How? How bizarre. A nearby preacher is squeamishly wiping blood off his weapon and hands. The bandits must have taken followers of St. Drusus um, for easy prey and paid with their lives. Embrace true power. I mean, it, it looks still looks a bit crazy around, but, you know. Uh, hey, look, Shorter's throat. <laughs> The towering statue of the Emperor that, is, that used to stand majestically in front of the Liege's palace was toppled and shattered by the rampaging crowd. A charred husk of the throne that formerly served as the seat of Incendia's court is lodged between its remains. Oh. Oh, we, oh yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah, the Inquisitor's really not going to be very happy with me. Uh-uh. No. Well, onwards and upwards. Judging by their injuries, the aristocrats were subject to a long party beating before their execution. I tread a path unexplored. That's the only way to do it, isn't it? With a good old beating beforehand? Oh, I could see this. <laughs> this is going to end well for, uh, for these guys. The world trembles For me, it'll be fine. My feet. Not so much for all these Inquisitor guys. Here's the man himself. Hi there. He does look cool, though. The Lord Inquisitor is engrossed in studying star systems, star system charts, and reports which are amassed on the desk like the ridges of a formidable mountain range. There are shadows beneath his eyes which are ruthlessly dis uh, dissecting the latest report, and his skin seems stretched taut over his bones like, of his, like blah, 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 over the bones of his skull. Without turning his head to you, Kalkazar says wearily, Greetings, your ladyship. Your timing is impeccable. Okay. An aged servant with the bearing of a veteran approaches the two of you. In a precise movement, he replaces the untouched cup of cold recaf in front of the Lord Inquisitor with a new one, slightly steaming. <laughs> look at uh, look at Kalkazar's solitary cup. Hospitality is not the Inquisition's forte, I see. I think we have to do that one. Oh, do I get one too? <laughs> I think I got a cup as well, so we're good. May the Emperor's mercy ensure that you never have cause to experience the hospitality of the Inquisition. Frosher, see to our guest. I think it's Frosher. Kalkasar's voice seems to endow the servant with a phenomenal ability to move instantly through space. A cup of recap appears in front of you before the sound of the Lord Inquisitor's voice dies away. Kalkasar notices Argenta and inclines his head with a dignified air. Sister. The Battle Sister's eyes gleam as the Lord Inquisitor addresses her. May your path be blessed. It is gratifying to see that the trials endured by the Expanse have failed to extinguish the flame of your fortitude. Look, nobody likes to suck up Argento, okay? Just back off. Lady Navigator Cassia. Lord Inquisitor's lips curve into a thin smile as he catches a glimpse of Scarlet eyes. I hear that House Orcelio is going through a difficult time. Change is coming. I sincerely hope it is for the better. Your colours, Lord Inquisitor, are as rich as they are multifaceted. I have never encountered anything like it before. Unclouded hues flowing from one to the next. Amazing harmony. Amazing and frightening. That a man of such status and talents has taken an interest in the well-being of the Nav Navis Nobilite House. 
sorry, Nobelite's house is a great honor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have brought Adira for this one. Adira shrinks under Kalkazar's gaze and seems to try to saddle it. To sidle? Oh, no. S siddle? Behind you. What the? What? 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 But the Lord Inquisitor does not even deign to address the Psyker with a remark. Jai touches the Aquila on her chest and drops her head in an unnecessarily deep bow. O oh Lord Inquisitor, smiting spear of the Imperium, with the gold of faith cutting through the nebulae of the Coronas Ex- Kalkazar raises a hand in warning. If I were you, Mistress Hyderi, I would endeavour not to, dr to draw the Inquisitor's attention to my person. Sorry, I would not endeavor. I would endeavor not to draw the Inquisition's attention to my person. Sorry, I don't know what's going on today. I've got to get uh, out of focus. A Macantum tabulara official do carry many things. Reattaching a head to a body is not one of them. I'm just going to sift my recaf. S sif? Sip. I am going to sip my recaf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like completely nonchalant in front of this the, the, the Inquisitor here. No, do not care. Do not care. Despite the lightning speed at which the uh, the frosh has served you your drink, you manage not to spill a drop. The taste of the recaf strikes you as a perfect match for the palace's new master. Brutally strong and burning, with a sharp hit of precious uh, aromatic spices. Aromatic spices. Uh oh. Now I have to pick something actually worth saying. That's not fun. Um, what do you what 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 you say? What help do you want from me, Frosher? If you please, Frosher, 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 maybe. The Inquisitor nods imperiously, imperiously, at the servant who draws some kind of remote control from his pocket. All sound, whose sources are more than three meters away, fades to nothing. Oh, that's like a, that's a, that's a handy spy device. You have misconstrued me. It is I who intend to help you, your ladyship. I am displeased with you. Well, at least I'm doing something right. <laughs> you inherited a certain reputation from Theodora, and you have thoroughly tarnished that reputation. Under these difficult circumstances, a person in my position might decide that you ought to be killed before your actions become truly... Truly what? Deleterious? Deleterious? What does that mean? Corruption has rooted itself deep in your soul. You serve the ruinous powers, and the ruinous powers serve you. I fail to see the problem with that, honestly. But instead, I am giving you a chance to redeem yourself. Ah. The perpetual one more chance. I mean, it's not going to work, Kalkazar. Alright. I only need a hundred more points before I'm a fanatic, so... I mean, I'm not turning back now. To serve me, and therefore the Imperium. To demonstrate your extraordinary talents, and to dispel the doubts surrounding you, at least partially. This is a most generous and rare opportunity. Do not squander it. Can I just kill him? Do you think we could do that? You will reconquer uh, Euphrates Euf too for me. The Inquisitor gestures to one of the servants, and the silencing field disperses. Frosher, another recap. This one has gone cold. I, I'll have one as well, please. Repent sincerely. You are right. The shadow of corruption has fallen on my soul. I want to banish that shadow with your help. <laughs> nah. Point at the servant. Is he your valet or another Inquisition assassin? <laughs> Something tells me. Mr. Mr. Frosher over here. Mr. Mr. Frosher, he's a no-nonsense kind of guy. Yeah, that's why he strikes me as a no-nonsense kind of guy. Why can't both be true? Frosher has been a member of my retinue for 
50 Terran years, and the person in my entourage who comes closest to being my confidant. Something akin to a warm smile touches the Inquisitor's lips. We have had cause to be involved, involved in many incidents, whose reports have since been marked with the seal of silence. Frosha nods differentially. Differentially? And on his aged, jowled face appears an expression caught between eternal loyalty, motherly affection, and religious devotion. Yeah, he's, an, he's a no-nonsense guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me more about um, Efrut... Ef Ephrates? A sacred world of the Adaptus Mechanicus. Off limits to lay people. I am one of the few who do not worship the Armasaya to have set foot on its surface, or rather, I was. Now it is crawling with unbelievers. Sounds like my kind of place. The despicable world bearers attacked the captured Ephrut Ephrates, Ef Euphrates, too. And the cult of the final dawn brought an entire horde of heretics to the planet. I sent my troops to aid the Explorator forces laying siege to the world, but a rift occurred among the commanders. They need an authoritative general, and you are perfect for the role. My confidence is not misplaced, I trust. Uh... What do they want with the planet? The reasons behind their machinations would be pure speculation at this point. Bring me prisoners to interrogate, and perhaps we will gain some much-needed insight. Okay, the world bearers went there themselves. They didn't just send in their puppets. Clearly, the stakes for them are high enough. Orlon the Cruel has stirred his profane self to make a personal appearance on the planet. Kunrad, incidentally, is also there. I hear you two have unfinished business. Him and I will generously leave to you. Sorry, him I will generously leave to you. When you are finished with him, you may simply dispose of his mortal remains. No need to surrender them to the Inquisition for an inquest. Consider it my gift. Oh. Uh, what matter first brought your attention to the planet out of interest? An utterly transparent attempt to learn secret intelligence. I offered to make you my general and you tried to pump me for information. Who will he done? I think it was just a general question. What forces do we have in place and what is the rift that occurred between the commanders? Explorator Fleet Divine Cognizance 82, uh, sorry, 78 to 21 recalled its most combat ready units to retake the world. They are supported by my most powerful strike fleet and a group of deadlier allies. I dispatched a pack of space wolves to hunt down the transgressors. Oh, cool. Unfortunately, the leaders have failed to find a common language. The esteemed Thorbold is at odds with the conclave of the Mechanicus' battle con con congregation, and the Omicide's servants find Thorbold's stringent nature off-putting, and neither group is fond of militant Silibek, who commands my forces. We're not fond, to be precise. Okay. The esteemed militant perished along with his ship, and a week ago, when his noble allies failed to support his offensive. Okay. How did you manage to enlist the age, enlist the aid of the angels of the emperor? I must remind you that I am still Lord Inquisitor of the Coronis Expanse, not merely some. What do you always say? Brochure, some Grox bothering imbecile. I'm going to call him. <laughs> If certain rogue traders at times allow themselves to speak to me in an overly willful manner, that should not give you cause to doubt my authority. Oh, I'm going to love uh, chopping this guy's head off. I hope I get the opportunity to do that. The situation is clear. You will be given the details when you arrive in orbit. Okay. That's funny. I can decline this? I'm afraid I must decline. Deal with your problems yourself. Fine, I will take the chance you have given me. Spoiler alert. I'm not going to. Most wise on your part. Hold a war council. That sounds fun. Did I get some more tea? 
Calcasar nods at the paper that his servant differenti differentially delivered to the table. Why does it always have to be this weird word? Anyway. This document attests to the extraordinary powers that you now have at your disposal. I am counting on your success, Schaefer. This is where we part away, Schaefer. I have seen enough. And I no longer wish to be an accomplice to your crimes. Oh, okay, okay. Although the Lord Inquisitor was generous enough to look past your transgressions, I have no doubt that we will meet again in circumstances you will find less auspicious than these. Oh, Heinrichs, you, you, you really don't want to meet me in, in less auspicious circumstances than these. Trust me, buddy. Because I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hesitate. I mean, I took your sword. You don't even have a sword anymore. I warned you, rogue trader. You reek of corruption from head to toe. Even an honourable death will not wash away the stench. The Inquisitor is free to absolve you of whatever he likes, but for me, being part of your warband is a disgrace. Farewell. Oh, now we get rid of the weak. Here we go. We all knew this was coming. You have carried Theodora's unholy legacy, Schaefer, and you have surpassed her in hundredfold in a hundredfold in un unholiness. Hey, we're uh, we're reaching big, yeah. How regrettable! Farewell, and pray to the Emperor that you will find redemption before I grant you his peace. For heretics, or gentle pauses. The fire in her high, in her eyes could incinerate you. Deserve no quarter. Um. I don't really care to, to, to try and keep any of these guys. I mean, Argenta, maybe you are not without. Uh, as if you are without transgression, Argenta. Um, uh, I guess she doesn't really care for it either. Oh well. There is a difference between not without transgression and steeped in heresy. The former can be atoned for by righteous deeds and service. The latter can only be burned away by cleansing fire. So, which are you? Uh... <laughs> you know, I've always found your sermons nauseating. My ears will be glad to be free of them. Argenta grinds her teeth and tightens her grip on the weapon in her hands. Burn in the abyss, Schaefer. Right after you, right after you, Argenta. All right, turn around and leave. Let's go. Kalkazar, who has been observing the unfolding scene in silence, takes a sip from his cup. Well then, I hope a diminished retinue will be no obstacle to doing your duty, Schaefer. Dismissed. My ascension has only just begun. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Out of curiosity, can I just hit this guy in the face? One step closer. Let's no, see no. the opportunity. No, I, I cannot hit him in the face. Unfortunately, that would have been kind of fun. See you, losers. All right. Onwards and upwards. I think we may... What do we want to do? Do we want to get a... Um, uh, another mercenary to replace Argenta? Maybe. I like how Argenta's pro, uh, uh, thingy's still here. Her little circle thing. Portrait. Alrighty, to the dock. Let's go. It's a shame I couldn't corrupt any of them. That would have been kind of, would have been kind of uh, a nice twist. But uh, ultimately, I guess we can't. We just lose them, and it is what it is. Is what it is. Right. So where do we stand? Um. Oh. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Become a zealot of chaos. It's ticked. But I'm not a zealot of... Am I a zealot of chaos? 
No, I'm not. I'm 109 points away. Oh. But it says, wait for, uh, wait for fate to lead you to the iron world. But it says I'm done. It says, become a zealot ticked. Cool, okay. So maybe it doesn't literally mean the zealot rank. Uh, and instead it just means like... I don't know. Fanatic? Okay, so I have no side quests to do. The siege. Hold a war council. The emperor's palm. Hmm. Where are we looking? Aha! Okay, so it makes sense why we weren't able to go here before. Because it's story related. I get it. I got it. Alright, let's... Uh Let's head up there, shall we? So that'll be it for this episode. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.